You may remember when we did the first um, video, we mentioned about the uh, uh, dashboard, and we said, oh, the dashboard had this funny piece of metal on it, which I thought was real, and then we decided it wasn't real. But luckily, underneath the dash, there was this original panel. And that hole was had nothing in it, this hole had nothing in it, and that hole had nothing in it, and we said, oh, I'll probably be able to find them, and it'd be very difficult, etc., etc. Um, anyway, I managed to find a dead right panel, and I didn't actually find it. It's completely original, the monkey metal was still in good condition, but somebody gave it to me. Very nice man, he said, oh, I've got just what you want for there, and he gave it to me. This hole was not original, and it isn't original, but it did have, apparently, one of these flow meters. Because I found one and tried it in the hole and all the screws lined up, so I'm, I'm pretty confident that's what was in there. So luckily, we've managed to complete that now. Um, luckily, this thing here is in very good condition, because normally, what happens is they... Um, they're made of a funny old aluminium that just literally disappears. But this is in very good condition. And I was very lucky because somebody actually gave it to me because it's quite a valuable and very difficult to find bit. So that was a bit of luck. And looking through the pictures, I've noticed that this has a lump of wood on here. And, and in, the, in the pictures you can see that it's got a little line in it. And this came with some other stuff. This is Samson. It obviously is not for this car, but that's the sort of thing it had. So I'm thinking what I'm going to do is obviously have a word with my, the people in High Wickham, Classic Dash, and see if they can suggest how I can make the main bit. And then I'll take it to them and get them to do that and put that sort of light coloured wood in there and I think that'll make that look really good. But again, looking at the pictures, it would seem that this had a strip of half round material round here, sort of like half round aluminium, and underneath it the trim went and then it had a roll round there um, and it's all the way round. And apparently I was reading, you know, since I've sort of got into this now, in the last two years I've done quite a bit of reading and it turns out that one of their very works drivers, they had a big accident and he hit his head on there and it killed him. So from then on, all the works racing cars had this rubber or padded edge. And I think that's what this car would have had, because looking at the original uh, woodwork, you could see where all the nails had been. So that's what I'm intending to do, is to put that bead round and then put the rolled edge on it. The other thing is, of course, is that it wouldn't have been leather, because this is a cheap little car, it would have been Rexine. And Rexine's hard to find these days, but luckily, 40 years ago, when I had my Morgan Free Wheelers, they were done with Rexine. And I thought, if I ever retrim one of them, which I never did, it would be nice to do it in Rexine. So anyway, I lived at that stage, I lived in Greenford, and I was in... Um, Ealing, I think, and I went into this shop and I said to this old boy, do you know anything about Rexine? And he said, yeah, he said, I've actually got somewhere somewhere. He said, I'll go out and have a look. And he went out in the back room and he came back with this roll of Rexine. And I'm thinking that there's a very good chance that we'll use that on this car because they, well, I've got the original seats and they're not leather, are they? they're definitely Rexine or some kind of leather cloth. So that's the plan. But as you can see, the woodwork is now done, and it's an absolutely beautiful job. I had it done by quite a well-known firm, but actually, in fact, it was done by a bloke in his shed at the bottom of the garden. But luckily, he was, he's not actually a, a sort of man who did woodwork. He was a, originally he's a, a pattern maker. And pattern makers worked at very close tolerances, and he's done it absolutely beautiful. Everywhere you look, it's... It's exactly as the original was, and it matches beautifully. And then when I had the aluminium done, I had that another firm do that had worked for me for years and done other cars. And I said to them, I want you to put new, put the original metal back, but don't go mad, I don't want it to look new. So it's still got a few lumps and bumps. 
And I think that that will look really good when we, because we're going to hand paint this car. The other thing they had to do, because they had to put a little piece of metal on around there, because when we pulled it off, obviously all the old nails are desperate. So, so that has got an edge around there. Um, and then when they put the tail on, and they put the front on, apparently you couldn't do it in one piece, so they've had to put the front on, put the back on, and then weld it when it's on the car up there. Which I mean is a fabulous job when you consider, you know, that obviously not burn the woodwork. And it's, it fits absolutely beautiful, you know. It is a very, very good job. And I've known these people for years and I knew they would do a good job and they have done a very good job. So there we are, the perfect woodwork, actually made in beech, because originally Samsons didn't use ash like we do. So when this bodywork was made, they had to go and buy the beach specially to make it um, obviously as original. And, and he's covered it beautifully. I mean, I, you, know, you just cannot fault it. There's some over here. There's the floorboards that he made. And they're all copied from the original. Um, and they're a bit heavy. But I can't remember how they go now. Yeah, I can't remember. I took them out and I've forgotten how they go. But anyway, as you can see, it's lovely wood. This was all like that, but we painted it black. So then, the people who did all this, the bonnet had loads of holes in it, so they welded all those up, and there was a little bit dented, and they straightened all that out. And the edge was a bit damaged, so they put a bit round the edge. So really, it's over to us now. We've got to, we've got to paint it, trim it, make some little buttons up that go in there, so that when you lift the bonnet up, it goes onto the little button there. Um, so, as you can see, I think we've made a good job. I mean. I like specials, I like making specials, but when you're lucky enough to buy something original as this, you can't afford to bugger about with it, it's got to be done right. So I'm hoping that this is going to look really good. But we've got another Samson I've bought since then, which was just a, literally a load of bits. And we're building a little car which we'd like to use in trials. Um, and it's coming on really well, in fact I reckon by another month it'll be standing on its wheels done. So we'll do a video about that because that is a four push rod car which is very interesting because how you can work eight valves with four push rods is, was a bit of a mystery to me but now I understand it is quite clever and it uses the same combustion chamber and same cylinder as a twin cam. So it could be quite a powerful little engine and I'm hoping that if we do trials it'll have a load of torque and we could perhaps they'll give all them Austin 7s a bit of a seeing to but Anyway, that's another, another day, another time. I've managed to get an original starter motor, which I'm going to have reconditioned, but I haven't got the original starter motor bracket. If anybody's got one, it would be a very good thing to be able to get, but I'd like to borrow one and I'd have a really po proper pattern made so we could have them cast. And of course, that would be a good thing for everybody then, because anybody ain't got one we'll have a casting and all you've got to do is machine it because what it does is it holds the starter motor but it has an extension that stops the starter motor coming out when you press the starter motor it keeps it in gear and we could really do with one of those so so that's my next um thing to overcome but i'm quite confident we'll overcome it but i bought a whole load of spares recently um and in amongst it it was everything but the starter motor bracket. But I've got a starter motor now, so that's a start. Because this car did have a starter motor and it did have a bracket, but it was non-original. And, you know, I'm getting an anorak now. I want to make it as good as I can possibly get it. It's a sort of challenge. Well, I hope this brings you up to date with this car. As you, If you look at the first video, you can see what a lovely original car it was. And I've had to be very, very careful in everything I've done. Well, I've had a lot of luck, like getting the switch panel, finding the clock, you know, so it's been a very good job, really, and, and the car is, it's, it's 
unbelievable good condition. I mean, everything I take off it, like the kingpins and the and the steering arms and the and the steering joints, and there's no wear on anything. It's just a case of cleaning it up and putting it back, which is what I've done. So we haven't cleaned everything back to bare metal and painted it and made it look like a concourse job. I've just literally cleaned it up, put a bit of chassis black on it, and that's it really. I don't intend to do the big deal. I want this to look like a lovely old car that's been really looked after, and, and it's all original as it can be. So don't forget, subscribe if you want to keep up, and um, hope to see you again sometime.